What's up, beautiful people? I'm Zach, and you're watching Zach Makes Movies, the channel where we talk about... You guessed it, Frank Stallone. Rocky has been one of my favorite film series since the very first time I saw it. It's an incredibly inspirational film, and it's an incredibly enduring franchise. Uh, today I wanted to get into a quick ranking of the Rocky movies. Now, I haven't seen the third Creed film yet, so I'm not going to be including that trilogy into this ranking, but ranking the six Rocky films is a little bit easier. So, uh, dead last place... Rocky Five. This is the black sheep of the franchise. It's not a movie I rewatch very often. I saw it a handful of times when I was younger, and I would just watch all five of the Rocky movies at the time. But it was apparent even when I was a kid that Rocky V was nowhere near as good as, as the rest. We always called that one the street fight, and it just, yeah, it just felt, it felt very different from the other films in a bad way. There's definitely some nice moments in it. There's some interesting material to work with there with the father-son relationship, but ultimately it was a bunch of nonsense. It was exploring aspects of the world that we didn't really need explored. But all in all, as far as fifth films in a franchise goes, it could have been a lot worse. All right, up next in the franchise, we have Rocky IV. This is a fan favorite for a lot of people. Uh, I enjoy Rocky IV. I enjoy the very different setting that we get. This movie takes place in Russia as opposed to Philadelphia. It's a lot more 80s. Uh, this is the movie where Polly wants to have sex with a robot, which was an odd choice. See ya. Oh, Polly, who taught her to talk like that? She loves me. And there's a lot of odd choices in this movie. But overall, it's an iconic addition to the franchise. Ivan Drago, very classic 80s villain. I like what they did with separating the two styles of training. You have Drago training with science and mechanics and advanced technology. And Rocky is chopping wood and running over snowy mountains. A solid fight. This, of course, is the movie where Creed dies, which is a real bummer. If he dies, he dies. It's hard to watch that part no matter how many times you've seen it and now that we've lost the great Carl Weathers it makes it even tougher but that was the direction they chose to go in in the franchise I understand it but it does set up a very solid ending where Rocky has to come back and kick the shit out of this Russian bastard all to prove a message that if I can change then you can change all of us can change now cue a slow clap from a series of Russian politicians that wanted him dead 20 minutes earlier. I guess the message here is that no matter how deep into a Cold War America is, boxing, number four, Rocky Balboa. I really love this movie. Uh, when it came out, people were cracking jokes on Sylvester Stallone being too old. There were already jokes in media 10 years before Rocky VI came out about what the next Rocky movie would look like, whether he'd be in a wheelchair or, or whether he'd be fighting at a retirement facility. Um, not that far off, but actually they did a phenomenal job portraying Rocky as an aging fighter who's retired isn't really interested in getting back in the ring again until he is. Uh, we get Mason the Line Dixon, which might be the stupidest name for a fighter in the history of the sport. I did like the kind of entryway into the story being this video game fight that's matching up Prime Rocky versus the current heavyweight champ and having that kind of start a conversation with the fans of who would win it's very reminiscent of conversations that used to be said about Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Who would have won if you fought this man in your prime? <laughs> I know I'm great, but can I tell you something? Uh -huh. In this situation, every head must bow, every tongue must confess. This is the greatest yeah. moment. Rocky VI is very heartfelt. It's surprisingly sensible, and it has what somehow became the most famous scene in the entire franchise. Let me tell you something you already know. 
The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. I love the training montage in this movie. I love Duke's hurting bombs. You've got calcium deposits on most of your joints. So sparring is out. I had that problem. Your knees don't work anymore. You're not as fast anymore. So we got to really build up these powerful punches. Every time you hit him with a shot, it's got to feel like he tried kissing the express train. Yeah. So they really did a good job of portraying a realistic version of this kind of nonsensical story. You want a crazy old man. You'll get there. Let's go. Ultimately, it's done really well. I liked the ending. I think they made the right decision with the ending. Kind of takes us back to the first movie. He went the distance. That was all he really wanted to prove that he could do. We go out on a strong note. This movie does a really good job of paying homage to previous movies, bringing back characters like Spider Rico, like uh, the little girl from, from the first movie. And overall, a very successful and fun Rocky movie. Number three. Rocky 3. Now this was very tough. I love Rocky 3, but I just happen to love Rocky 2 a lot as well. Um, and I think I've just spoiled what the top three are going to be, but this is not that difficult of a list. Rocky 3 is fantastic. Rocky 3 is the one where we get Eye of the Tiger. We really feel like we're taking it up a notch. As soon as the movie begins, we are thrust into this new world. It's a world where Rocky is famous, Rocky is a champion, uh, he's being carried a little bit, and he's gotten soft. And the only direction that we can go now is to give him a new nemesis that will beat the shit out of him and remind him uh, of the hunger he needed to have to get through those first two movies. He's losing the eye of the tiger, and that's why we get this incredible song by the band Survivor, uh, which again, talk about a series continuously topping itself. If Gonna Fly Now was the most famous song in the franchise in the first movie, and then Bill Conti's work with the score of the second movie kind of brings that home, Eye of the Tiger in Rocky III takes it to another new level. You know why you can? Don't get a sucker no statue. Give him guts. I told you I wasn't going away. You got your shot. Now give me mine. Mr. T is fantastic as Clubber Lang, an incredibly fun character and a perfect antagonist for Rocky, who's just a sweet, dopey guy to have this loud mouth. Clubber Lang is everything that Apollo Creed was pretending to be. He's an absolute dickhead. Apollo Creed was a showman. Clubber Lang is an actual lunatic. We get the, the insane wrestling matchup with Thunder Lips. A ton of fun scenes throughout. Um, Mickey dies, which is always a bummer, but if he dies, he dies. But if not for that, we wouldn't have gotten this incredible montage of Rocky going to be trained under Apollo Creed, which leads us to the fantastic ending of Rocky III. Uh, with this absolutely iconic final frame. The incredibly homoerotic training montage on the beach is a great scene. There's a lot of racist jokes in this movie that probably wouldn't gonna fly today, but it all <laughs> it's all a product of the time, which is all you can ask for movies from the 70s and 80s. And ultimately, it's an incredible third film in an enduring franchise. And then we come to number two, Rocky Two. Now Rocky Two gives us everything that we didn't get from the first movie. It gives us a little more time to get to know the budding relationship between Rocky and Adrian. It gives us a continuation of Rocky's story as a bum who was given a chance and where does he go from here? That was a one-and-done situation. Ain't gonna be no rematch. Well, now people are talking shit to Apollo, and now there's got to be a rematch. Rocky needs money. He's spending it like hotcakes. It only makes sense to have a rematch. And because Rocky lost in the first movie, 
from a writing standpoint, you can't really have him lose again the second time. There's so many great moments in this movie. The uh, the scene walking around the zoo in, in winter, the way that Rocky proposes so nonchalantly. You know, I was wondering, like, what do you think you're doing for, like, the next uh, 40 or 15 years? Uh, Adrian ending up in the hospital, Polly having these little moments of empathy, and that beautiful moment right before Bill Conti's score just kicks into second gear. Rocky's half-assed training turns into full-assed training, all as a result of one word of advice from Adrian. Win. Win. What are we waiting for? Take this! The training montages in this movie I like even more than the first movie. This music is just so perfect, and the entire fight sequence is done so much better in the second movie than it was in the first movie. It feels more real. The way that they each fall down and have to get back up for that final knockout is just cinematic gold. it's just a fantastic sequel. It's uh, clearly not as good as the first movie, but if you're someone that wants to see the main character win, it's going to be the best one in the franchise for you. But now we come to number one, and there could never be another number one. Ain't going to be no rematch. Number one, Rocky, 1976. This movie changed Hollywood. It carved out a path for a leading man in a straight shot trajectory that we have not really seen before or since. He sold his dog and he bet on himself in ways that I've never heard of another filmmaker doing. Stallone is not just an actor, he's a writer. He penned the script for the first Rocky film as well as the sequels before taking on the mantle of director following up the great John Avildsen. Uh, quick story, uh, when I was working as a food delivery driver in Los Angeles, one day I was delivering some food to a girl whose last name was Avildsen. I just saw first letter and then Avildsen. And I thought, that's such a unique name. I wonder if there's any chance that she was related to John, who had passed away a couple years prior. And so I went and delivered the food, she's very nice, and before I left, I just said, hey, I just have to ask, any relation to John Avildsen? And she said, yes, that was my father. And I just gushed about what a fantastic director he was. He also made The Karate Kid. He had a bunch of movies, but his two biggest claims to fame are Rocky and The Karate Kid, which are enormous. Uh, I got to attend a Q&A of Rocky a few years before that when he was still alive, obviously. Uh, so I had a bunch of stories that I was able to share with her about, you know, what an inspiration it was to get to hear from him on that day and how, you know, my fellow filmmakers still see him as being this great director of Hollywood history. And she really appreciated that. There's some perks to living in LA every now and then. Rocky one was like no movie before or since written in a span of three days after a failed meeting with producers who were looking for a different project, he basically bullshitted his way into it. He said that he had a script. He didn't. He went home and wrote one after watching a Muhammad Ali fight and was inspired by this scrappy young boxer who was taking on the champ. Stallone was offered about 100 grand to sell the script. He refused. He was offered 200 grand to sell the script. He refused. He was offered 300 grand to sell the script. He refused. He wanted to star in the movie himself. Now, that is not something that happens in Hollywood. If you write a script and you're lucky enough to get a studio to want to buy it, you sell it. There's no shot in hell that they're going to let you star in this movie. Never going to happen. And especially if your previous claim to fame is being a porn actor. But somehow, this man had the balls to turn down the money, take a much smaller percentage, star in the movie himself, 
and bring it to the Oscar stage. And the winner is Rocky. It is a true underdog story behind and in front of the camera. And I think the backstory to it is part of what makes it such an enduring and real underdog story. Especially in the first movie, I love how much he paints the town of Philadelphia as a nice place to live. It's a really uh, nice piece of fantasy filmmaking. And it births so many iconic moments. And the, the very idea of a world champion boxer deciding to give a shot to an unknown is... A very compelling premise as is uh, to take this very lovable lunk of an idiot uh, who is so uniquely written too and it's it is one of those things where Stallone was correct no one else would have been able to play that character he knew who Rocky was and I think in many ways it's because it was him the dog butt kiss that's in the movie was his dog that he sold to make the movie um, the turtles Cuff and Link were his personal turtles that he still owned some 30, 40 years later. So many great choices in the film. To have this dumb, hunky guy fall in love with a mousy, quiet, nerdy girl was a very interesting choice. And their love story is very unique. And the relationship with Polly is very unique and feels very real. The whole subplot with the docks and, you know, Rocky is basically a, a leg breaker for a living and he's not that guy he's letting people get away with uninjured thumbs but his boss who could easily be written as some good fellas asshole instead is kind of a nice guy no pun intended you know he gives him money for his date he's looking out for him the iconic moment where rocky is hitting the meat incredibly unsanitary but very famous now and then running in the street, running with the children, running up the stairs. All very iconic, all very classic now, and all very inspirational. It is impossible for me to watch that movie without going for a run afterwards, no matter how full of turkey and mashed potatoes I am. This series is an all-time favorite of mine. It's an all-time favorite of many for good reason. It is one of the great franchises in American film history, and no matter where they take the story next, I believe that people will always come back to those first few Rocky movies. And whether you're someone who just watches the first one, whether you're someone who watches all six, whether you're someone who throws the other three Creed films into the mix and watches all nine, we are all enjoying the fruits of the genius of Sylvester Stallone and his brilliant brother. You guessed it, Frank Stallone. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Check out these other videos you might like. And let me know in the comments what you want me to talk about next. Happy Thanksgiving. And see you next time. You're a tomato.